Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Father Alonzo Cox. I serve as the Diocesan Director for Ministry to African American Catholics and the Coordinator for the Vicariate for Black Catholic Concerns for the Diocese of Brooklyn. And I take this opportunity to welcome all of you here this afternoon as we give honor and glory and praise to our God um, for the gift of Jesus and for the gift of uh, black history as we um, honor our ancestors and we give uh, witness to the future here in Brooklyn and Rockville Center. I take this opportunity to welcome all of our visiting priests who are with us today who are from the Diocese of Rockville Center, the Diocese of Brooklyn, and the Archdiocese of New York. I also take this opportunity to welcome our visiting bishops who are here with us today. Um, Bishop Richard Henning, who is the Auxiliary Bishop for the Diocese of Rockville Center. Uh, Bishop Neil Tiedemann, who serves as the Vicar for the Vicariate for Black Catholic Concerns as our main celebrant and homilist. Bishop Guy Saint Sarik, the retired Auxiliary Bishop for the Diocese of Brooklyn. And most especially, we welcome Bishop Gabriel Malzier, who is the Bishop of St. Lucia. Um, he was with my parish today um, as we celebrated St. Lucia Independence Day. So we welcome you, Bishop Malzier. And in a very special way, we welcome to Brooklyn Father Tony Ricard, um, who will serve as our homilist today. Um, Father Ricard, we look forward to your inspiring message, and we thank you for being with us here in Brooklyn.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord.
Brothers and sisters, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hope in Christ, we are the most pitiful people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you, O poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven, for the ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for the ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord.
where a certain group of folk believe that somehow they can control the way somebody will pray. They believe somehow they can tell you how you want to talk to God. But even more, they believe that not only can they tell you how to talk to God, but they can control the way God will listen. Mm. Mm. Now you know you gotta have some unmitigated gall to think you can tell God how he was gonna listen. John, know we come from some resilient folks. We come from some folks who understood that the one thing no one could ever capture would be your soul. And even if they shattered your body, they could not control the way you were going to talk to God. But do you know there were times when you could be killed for talking to God the way your spirit said, talk to him? So our folk used to head out late at night, deep into the woods, where they would gather in the clearing and they would call it an old camp meeting or a hush hall. And when they would get out into the clearing, they would go so deep into the woods that whatever was going on in the woods would not be heard back in the mansion. And then when they got there, they would take a big giant kettle pot, the kind they would wash clothes in, and they would flip it upside down. And they believed that whatever did not hit the ears of God would be captured by that pot and sent down to Mother Earth. And then they would have church. Now, in the narrative of the right life of Frederick Douglass, we hear that Frederick said that if you want to have authentically black church, there was three things you need to have. Good music.
They would look at each other with smiles on their faces saying, Lord, Lord, Lord. Y'all know we had some church last night. Because <laughs> when the listener would sing, they would sing with him or her too. And they would say, Couldn't hear no Oh, freedom, oh, freedom. 
Soon they found themselves free, but yet still shackled. Believers yet still belittled. On the back of the pews in church, last in line to get Jesus. There's still a strong people, still a people of faith. Even from the back of the church, they would say, My vows to the Lord, and I never will turn back. Oh, I will go, I shall go to see what the end will be. Done made my vows to the Lord, and I never will turn back. Oh, I will go, I shall go to see what the end will be. Mother Mary Elizabeth Lane. Venerable Henriette DeLille, the Most Reverend Harold Robert Perry, strong-willed, unrelenting, touched by the hands of God. And they would say, let us break bread together on our knees. Let police guards, jailed for just sitting down, beaten for trying to get an education, all done to them by other Christian men and women. Yet still a strong people, still a people of faith. While being cursed and spat upon, they would say, hey, don't let nobody King Jr., the Honorable Third Good Marshal, Servant of God, Sister Thea Bowman, strong willed, unrelenting, touched by the hand of God. Together they would say, We shall overcome. We shall.
preaching the sermons, not just in the storefront church, but in cathedrals too, of strong people, of people of faith, whom after the inauguration of the first African-American president of the United States of America, a strong people, a people of faith, who say no more auction blocks, no more back of the pews, no more police dogs, a strong people, a people of faith, whom after 246 years of slavery in America, whom after 100 years of Jim Crow and segregation, whom after 44 years of prejudice and discrimination with the election of President Barack Hussein Obama was finally able to truly sing, my country tis a deep, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side. But the question is, where do we go from here? What does the future of our people, a people of God, hold? What now is our destiny? You see, my brothers and sisters, our destiny can be found in our history. We are a strong people, a people of faith. We endured every lash, every attack, every police dog, every unjust law, and every affront to our inherent human dignity. We are strong, and we must rely on the strength of the old days to endure the trials of today. But to do it, we must not forget from whence we came. As Sister Thea Bowman was so proud to say, we must remember who we are and whose we are. You see, we are descendants of some very powerful people. People who built nations and rebuilt nations on several continents. People who withstood some of the most heinous crimes committed against humanity. People who endured slavery in America, never ending times of Jim Crow, and a continuous fight for civil rights. We come from a people who were strong enough to endure being beaten, being raped, and being sold. My brothers and sisters, I hope you realize that it's no accident that we are still here today. Because if you are black and living in the Americas, you shouldn't be ashamed of all we endured in these lands. You see, you shouldn't be ashamed that we are descendants of an enslaved people. You shouldn't be ashamed that our ancestors were once shackled and sold. The fact that we are still here is living proof that we come from some very strong people. Because many died in the Middle Passage. Many were killed at the hands of sinful slave masters. Many died at the end of a whip or a noose. So the fact that we are still here is proof that our, our ancestors were strong enough to even endure what we consider unbearable. I'm not ashamed of my people's journey through slavery in America because of the fact that I'm still here. And I can tell you, I know whose I am. You see, we are the children of God. We are co-heirs to the kingdom of heaven. Do you realize that in the eyes of God, you are even greater than the angels? Oh, I know when folk pass away, they say, oh, God needed another angel. But that's so wrong. My mama used to say, God need, didn't need another angel. If he needed another angel, he would have made one. <laughs> you see, we can't become an angel. Because an angel was a created being for a very specific purpose. They were created to bring messages from God and to serve. And who do they serve? God and us. See, as Paul adds to the kingdom of heaven, when we get to heaven, the angels going to be waiting on us. 
And that's why we have to be faithfully committed before our God to indeed offer our prayers for the sake of our community. We have to cry out on behalf of our children and our children's children and all of our families. Lord, with the same power that our ancestors claimed, with the same hope that our elders marched, with the same pride that our parents still hold, we claim the authority of co-heirs to the kingdom of heaven. Because see, back when our enslaved ancestors were in these Americas, they understood what it meant to be a child of God. It meant that we had a relationship with God that was superseding any relationship you might have here on earth. You know, in today's proclamation from the gospel of our brother Luke, Jesus reminds us that we are his children and what it means to be blessed in the eyes of God. And that blessedness, blessedness is our goal. He said, blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Now, although we might know what it means to be economically poor, we need to know what it means to be spiritually poor in the eyes of our God. You see, to be spiritually poor is to know that we have nothing if we don't have God. As long as I got King Jesus, I know I'm going to be all right. Blessed are you who now hunger, for you will be satisfied. To hunger is to be on a constant search for God in our midst. It's a search for God knowing that when we die, indeed we will find him. But even more, it's a reminder that he is searching for us. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Lord knows that we, when we look at our nation, we need to laugh in order to help stifle some of our tears. But we need to ask ourselves though, have we stopped to weep in these modern times? For I also know that weeping can bring about a healing. And that's why our, our ancestors understood that there were times when you had to weep if you were going to be strong. I remember as a child, my daddy used to say, boys don't cry. But my mama reminded him, about the times he would cry. <laughs> but you see, our ancestors knew that there was power in that tear. Because they would say, Were you there? And they
guess the question we need to ask ourselves is are you there weeping today? Are you there with our children who are dying on the streets? Are you there with our children who are still being stopped at the southern border? Are you there with our children who are being falsely imprisoned? Are you weeping and trembling with them just as our ancestors and elders wept with us? Jesus goes on to say, Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and weep for joy on that day. For behold, your rewards will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. You see, my brothers and sisters, what we realize indeed is that as we dedicate our lives to our God, we realize now more than ever that we are people strong in the will of our Father. We come indeed from every angle of the earth, and we can imagine a love that's beyond all telling. And so don't be afraid. Don't fall into the traps of this world. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Keep doing what God needs you to do, and realize that in the end, you will be able to claim your rightful place as co-heirs to the kingdom of heaven. You know, throughout sacred scripture today, we are called to get back in touch with God. Remembering the core of our foundation and the reason why we were created in the beginning. And most importantly, we are called to reaffirm our relationship with Jesus Christ through recognizing our connectedness with one another. You know, our enslaved ancestors understood that indeed there was power in the name of Jesus. They also understood that there was power in being co-heirs to the kingdom of heaven. You see, they knew that the strength that came with their power was a strength that no one, no one could indeed take away. And that's why they didn't hesitate to call down the grace of God by using the power they had as co-heirs. Because if you pay close attention to the words of our ancestors, you will realize how they understood their power. In fact, one of the most powerful ways that they would call on God was to say Kumbaya. Now, unfortunately, the power of Kumbaya was perverted in the 1970s when folk from another culture <laughs> snatched the words of this prayer and turned it into a camp song. It went from being in a song that was played at an old camp meeting to being played with at campfires. But we must know that Kumbaya is not, I repeat, not an American folk song as some books would want you to believe. You see, Kumbaya is an African prayer that originated with the Gullah and Geechee people from the Sea Islands in South Carolina. And when they played Kumbaya, it wasn't with guitars and banjos. It was with their hearts, and it came from the depth of their souls. You see, when they would sing Kumbaya, it wasn't the way we sing it in church, with the tambourines and the clapping and the shouting. It was from the depth of their being. To see, they would sing it like this. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya.
Ancestors like Sister Thea who knew we needed them to stand firm and think. That's why in just a few minutes we're about to step to this altar. And with pride in our hearts, we'll be able to stand at that altar as we say those Eucharistic prayers and we say to one another, let us pray, pray together.
Almighty Father, thank you for gathering your people here today to give you glory, praise, and honor. We pray that our prayers and thanksgiving will be pleasing to you. May we renew our commitment to the gospel and daily give thanks for the blessings we receive. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, sisters, deacons, and all those who lead us and guide us by the faith will be led by the Spirit as they challenge us to live lives of great, greater faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord of light may enlighten all leaders both civil and religious, to dedicate their efforts to the welfare of all, and especially our own, will begin to demonstrate love and respect for one another and put an end to all violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord be our Ki Oluwa Imole Jowa La Wani Oye Papa oh, I'm sorry. We pe ki i jowa pelure oluwa bawa po ni isokon eni yon ara eni yon ara ati bagbo ni oru kore a bebe we pe ki emi oluwa Ma fa gbogbo awon ojo wa sinu ijobo lati ma yin oruko re let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayers that parents guardians, grandparents, godparents may continue to be strong, faith-filled role models for our young people in their homes, churches, and schools. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord by abri axila yo ki pagen kote pou yo rete. By service nou axila yo ki malade. Visite si la yo ki pagen person ki pou visite yo. Encourage si la yo ki pagen travay. Si pote prisonye yo. Epi tou, akei fwe aksen nou yo ki migran axila yo ki refugie. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Advisory Committee of the Office of Multicultural Diversity of the Diocese of Rockville Center and the Vicariate of Black Catholic Concerns, that God will continue to bless and nourish their faith as they become tools for evangelization within the Haitian American Apostolate Ministry and the Ministry to Catholics of African Ancestry, we pray to the Lord.
that our loved ones who have died and gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, may, through your mercy, have perpetual light shine upon them and rest in your peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, Lord, our Savior and our guide, we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditation in our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. We pray, Amen. Amen. Together we pray the prayer for the African-American and African family that's inserted into your worship aid. Together, God of mercy and love, we place our African-American and African families before you today. May we be proud of a history and never forget those who paid a great price for our liberation. Bless us one by one, and keep our hearts and minds fixed on higher ground. Help us to live for you and not for ourselves. May we be cherished and proclaim the gift of life. Bless our parents, guardians, and grandparents, relatives and friends. Give us the amazing grace to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Help us as your children to live in such a way that the beauty and greatness of authentic love is reflected in all that we say and do. Give a healing and to those less fortunate, especially the motherless, the fatherless, the broken, the sick, and the lonely. Bless our departed family members and friends. May they be led to the light of your dwelling. Shout the victory for all eternity. To the end, in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior and blessed Jesus. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of our families, pray for us. Offertory hymn will be in your program. It is I will trust in the Lord. Please sing with us.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that our gifts, our lives, and our history be a pleasing offering to our loving Father. <laughs> of the souls in hope of health and well-being. 
to see the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of the Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment and life. To us also, your servants who will sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord.
Yeah. 
myself before, but that's because a lot of you know me. I've been around a long time. Amen. 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 As a matter of fact, 36 years ago, in this very same space, this choir, which was then known as Sounds in the Spirit of Praise, Brooklyn Diocesan Gospel Choir, and the Obium Choir made its debut. And standing next to me, dancing all over this place was Sister Thea Bowman, Servant of God. Amen. Now I'm going to be brief and to the point. We are looking for children of God of a like mind. The need for praise and worship in their breast and trying to come out from between their lips. We are looking for people with open hearts, open spirits, to join the Sister Thea Bowman Servant of God Mass Choir. We have work to do. We have fundraising to do. We have praying to do. We have singing to do. And I know that there are people sitting in here right now that just can't wait to be a part of this Christian community. Before you go in to eat, there are flyers on the table, and there are also sign-up sheets. I come prepared. I think that Father R. Tony did a splendid job getting everybody in here riled up. I would like to be able to report to him that I got 20 people tonight. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We need tenants, we need basses, we need sopranos, we need altos. I see some of y'all young men here. I know you have some beautiful tenor voices waiting to come out. I am not looking for, mm, who's the latest today? I don't listen very often, but I think everybody know, knew Luther, right? I'm not looking for Luthers. I'm not looking for Beyonce's. I'm just looking for children of God who are ready to lend themselves to this work. So stop by the table and get yourself a flyer. Call me on Tuesday, fill out a sign-up sheet, find me, and hand it to me. May God be praised. Many blessings, and I am waiting for you. For the last four years, we've been working in collaboration for, uh, with the Diocese of Rockville Center in celebrating Black History Month, and I take this opportunity to thank Darcel so very, very much um, in her collaboration with me. Um, I can tell you that um, we are, we're in constant communication. She calls me every morning at 9 a.m. My secretary is here, she can tell you that. And for the last four to five months, we've been working so hard and making this a beautiful celebration. And thank God you did call me at the top of the morning for the last six months. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank the Sister Thea Bowman Gospel Choir for lifting our hearts and minds and voices to God today. Thank you. I also take this opportunity to thank Father Tony Ricard for being with us this evening.
Brother Ricard, you are always most welcome to come back to Brooklyn anytime. I thank Bishop Tiedemann for serving as the main celebrant um, for our Mass today. Uh, Bishop Tiedemann, thank you so much for your support, for your prayers. And to the bishops who are here, Bishop Sansarik, the retired auxiliary bishop here in, in Brooklyn. <laughs> bishop Richard Henning, who is a fairly new bishop in Rockville Center, who is my seminary professor as well too, Bishop Richard. <laughs> and Bishop Malzier, um, who is visiting us from St. Lucia, he is the Bishop of Russo, St. Lucia, thank you. Bishop Malzier and Bishop Tiedemann were in the Caribbean together as bishops, so it was a beautiful homecoming for the two of them together uh, today. A tremendous amount of work went into making this evening as beautiful as it is, and I thank um, Elrita Fowler, who was the secretary at the Vicariate Office. Elrita, thank you so very, very much. Our chapel looks so beautiful uh, this evening, and I thank Ms. Julia Primus and um, her team who really make this look so beautiful. <laughs> to the ladies of St. Peter Claver who grace us with their presence today, thank you so very, very, very much for being here. To our altar servers, and to our electors, and to our young people who served as um, ushers today from, who are from the ambassador program for the Vicariate, thank you so very, very much for your presence here this evening. I don't want to take too much time because there's dinner, and you're going to have some dinner tonight. All right? And so on behalf of Bishop DiMarzio, um, I, I thank all of you so very, very, very much for your support and for being here this evening. Uh, may the Lord continue to bless each and every single one of you um, as we strive each and every single day to be faithful and holy witnesses of Christ the Lord. Um, as Darcel mentioned, um, there are uh, flyers about the Sister Thea Bowman Choir um, in, the, in the vestibule. Uh, just cross the way, go right into the dining room, get a seat and we're gonna have a wonderful evening together. Also, there is information regarding our um, annual Kujenga um, retreat that will take place at the end of July. A representative from, from Kujenga will be speaking to you very, very, very briefly in the dining room um, about um, information regarding Kujenga this year. But there is information that I would love for all of you to take um, about our youth retreat. Um, it has been so fruitful for the last 25 years um, in really strengthening the faith of our young uh, people here in the Diocese of Brooklyn. So you'll be hearing a little bit about that at dinner this evening. May the Lord continue to bless you, and may you have a wonderful and beautiful evening. God bless you. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you.